afternoon. I'm uh, off to do my six monthly proficiency check on the caravan that uh, allows us to do single engine IFR charter or passenger transport as it is these days. Um, part of it includes the uh, practice or the, or the um, assessment of making sure I remember how to do a turn back procedure with an engine failure after takeoff. And um, I know last time I posted a video of that, people were making lots of comments about how well we shouldn't train for that. Um, in many cases, I, I do agree. Uh, in this particular case though, we're legally required to do it uh, in the single engine turbine machines in the event of an engine failure after takeoff. Uh, it's a very strict procedure. I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in flying the aeroplane by feel, but uh, this is one of those things where you've just got to fly the numbers. Uh, Ollie's on his way over to uh, to do my assessment. We've just done the ground component, which uh, it appears that I've passed, so that's that's good. Uh, so when I get back, though, I'll uh, I'll talk a little bit more through the actual procedure itself and uh, and all the numbers we do fly and we've got minimum heights and that sort of thing. It's uh, it's very much a pre-planned and pre-briefed procedure in the takeoff safety brief, rather than just uh, have a bit of a go and hope for the best. Uh, so we have a caravan ready to go for the check. Uh, I'm in the left seat, which I'm very rarely in these days. So uh, that's all very exciting for me. I can reach all the switches and that sort of thing. And um, I'm looking forward to it. It's unfortunately uh, too nice of a day to fly IFR, but we'll have to anyway. Get in and we'll, uh, we'll go and have some fun. So I've got my approach plate here. Um, instead of using the iPad, I don't like to cheat when I'm on an assessment. Um, not that using the iPad's cheating, but uh, I like to make it a little bit, a little bit more difficult just for my own learning. So the old uh, Maitland RNP whiskey we're off to do. Buy whiskey alpha for a hold. Welcome back. It's now five days of shave later, uh, but I thought I'd finish off our video on the turn back procedure from the other day. So the reason that we do them or train for them is because we have an approval called prescribed single engine aeroplanes and that allows us to do single engine IFR charter which is normally only allowed to be done in a twin engine aeroplane in our turbine engine single or the prescribed aeroplane. Now uh, part of the requirement of that is that we have a procedure in place for engine failings after takeoff and the ability to do a turn back procedure. Um, as I said the other day, it's a very strict procedure. We've got some minimum numbers that we have to adhere to as far as the minimum height and minimum speeds during the turn. Um, so the minimum height for the caravan, a bit different for the TBM 850, is 700 feet ADL. Uh, any less than that, we just don't have the margin to get back to the runway. Uh, so lower than that, we're just going to treat it like a 172 or any other single and carry on straight ahead. Um, if we're above our 700 feet AGL, then not always the right decision. Uh, depends on circumstances, depends on wind, depends on surrounding terrain, all that sort of thing, but we are able to consider the turn back. Um, it has to be very, very drastically pre-briefed in the takeoff safety brief so that, well, maybe the engine failure will come as a bit of a surprise, uh, but we, we don't want to be in a bit of shock and a bit of surprise as to what we're going to do. Um, so we want to turn into wind during the turn back. So if we have our runway there, promise it's a runway, and we've got a wind coming from the left. In the take off safety brief, we're going to brief that we're going to make a left hand teardrop turn. So we get to here and the engine fails. Immediately, we're going to do our U-turn and the wind will help push us back on the reciprocal runway. Uh, if we didn't do the takeoff safety brief, we hadn't briefed what we were going to do, then there would be a bit of shock um, as the engine fails. What are we going to do? Well, we haven't thought about it. In that case, you're better off carrying on straight ahead. Um, pancaking into the trees, you walk away from it. The aeroplane probably needs a bit of a buff, but uh, at least it'll be safe. Uh, things over, you won't make the runway, um, which would avoid us having to buff the aeroplane. Um, we can also run through some troubleshooting dr drills as we're doing the turn. Um, but the main thing is to make the turn a feather the prop. If we don't start the turn on time and we don't feather the prop, then we're simply not going to, uh, to make the runway. Uh, I find people a lot of the time will start doing their drill while they're heading away from the runway, and then once they get round to, oh, the engine didn't start again, and they get round to feathering the prop and making the turn, uh, they just simply don't, don't have the time. So if you run out of the time, um, I tell people just make the turn and feather the prop. 
I should also say, don't try this at home without doing some significant training with someone who's approved to do the training, uh, because it all can turn very much into tomato gravy very quickly. So we're going to have a minimum of 30 degrees, but a maximum of 45 degrees angle of bank as we make the turn. And then I take the first stage of flat, just as I'm like, as I'm halfway through the turn. From there on, you see flat as required to, uh, to make the runway. You'll find that in caravan, unlike 182s, where the last stage of flat was pretty much all drag, there's still an awful lot of lift. Um, so that's where that last stage of flat, if you're feeling a bit low, will actually pop us over the trees and onto the runway. We're going to have a look at a video that uh, Ollie took during my prof check the other day of the turn back procedure. And uh, once again, don't try this at home unless your company's approved to do it and you're flying with someone who is approved to teach it because uh, it, is a, it is a very drastic procedure and uh, something that needs to be practiced many times and make sure you can get right before you, you will do it in anger. So, advisory only. Uh, if you do turn into tomato gravy, I was never here and my name's not Toby. Let's have a look at the video. Okay, SB1 is alive, SB2 is alive, SB3 is alive, props governing. Torque is set, T's and P's are in the green, fuel flow is high. We'll pop that nose wheel off, let him get airborne when he wants to. Okay, airborne, we'll get a positive rate. We'll put 85 knots and we'll go 10 degrees nose up. And then we'll get rid of our first stage of flap, reset 10 degrees nose up once we're through 95. Which is there, we'll go flaps zero. Okay, there you go, simulated engine failure. Oh no, so lowering the nose as briefed right centre left, 45 degree angle bank turn, round, power lever to idle, ignition's already on, NG, we'll check we're above 50%, so I'll understand the EPL, we've got no response, so we'll stow, feather, and we'll then uh, cut it off, but I won't actually do it, clear right centre left, I'm going to take that first stage of flap now in the turn, minimum 85 knots, in balance. 500. So I'm coming here, I'll take in, simulated for after takeoff, returning for landing, one the direction. Stage of flat now to pop us over those trees. Okay. Can't see the body, we're all clear. Go Copy. On. Last stage of flap. Separators open. Bit of a tailwind, so we're going to have to drive it. I'm going to go round from this one just yep. for the sake of not upsetting everybody. And I'm happy we'd make that on. Cessna Queensland area, Tango Now approaching Whiskey Alpha overhead, Cessna Township 3400, commencing the RMP into Maitland. And we'll call on a five mile southwest final for Maitland. Copy. Straight Cessna CH Whiskey Cabin goes round in the 17 direction. We'll be parting upwind to the south end, then rejoining Crosswind for runway 35, Traffic Cessna.